Tommy, how much would you attribute any of this to not playing 12 days in terms of the turnovers and defense early? Okay. I, I, first off, I thought you were going to say to attribute what to winning by 16. Um, Is that how you so, kind of look uh, at it though? Hey, listen, guys, hey, guys, I got a lot of respect for Coach Hopkins. He's a friend of mine. I, I've, I've put battled against him when he and I were at Syracuse and Gonzaga. And, 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 and then when he was at Washington and I was at Gonzaga, I mean, playing against them is a pain. And um, I know obviously they haven't gone off to a great start this year, but I think they're a better team than their record indicates. And, um, you know, they're, they're, a, they're, they're a pain. I mean, that, that zone, you know, they, they seem a little more committed now to play in that zone than they were earlier in the year. And they add the big fella, so they have another a, a seven three guy they throw in there that that's interesting. And uh, you know he's actually from the northwest, so I've seen him play a lot. And that kid's gotten so much better. I'm really happy for him. But uh, but they do an unbelievable job of of creating turnovers when you're trying to pass inside the zone, and then when you're trying to pass from inside to outside the zone. And uh, and you can't simulate it at practice. Hopefully, it was a great learning experience for our guys, and and we got the win. So all in all, I'm happy. Thank you. Next question, Troy Hutchison. Can you talk about Dalen Perry's game and how he's been able to, you know, not only score but rebound and assist, kind of do everything for you guys? Yeah, I mean, Dalen's a do-all player, you know, and, and he's been working really hard on his shot. And, you know, we've kind of been doing some tweaks here and there. And I just told him, listen, we don't, we don't need to stress out about it because you do so many other things well. Um, let's not forget about those and just focus on maybe something that's not your strength. But to see him knock down a couple threes, I think was 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 great for for our team and great for his confidence. Um, you know, I really challenged. We had individual meetings with the guys, and 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 I really challenged um, Pella and and Dalen to start rebounding better. Um, you know, I feel like Dalen was only averaging about 4.1 rebounds per game, and Pella was like 2.9. And you know, and, and you guys have been next to the to those. They're they're two physical specimens. I mean, they got to be aggressive on the glass. And I think, you know, I think they had 19 rebounds between them today. So um, the message was received, and, and they get all the credit for going out there and making it happen. When Dalen is doing that, what does that do for the team and the offense in general? Well, I mean, D Dalen gets guys shots. You know, he gets guys good shots, and, and, he, and he's and he's a big guy, and he's able to make penetrating passes. So, you know, I mean, you you guys know I I, I love two point shots, and, and and he gets us a lot of great action around the basket, and he, and he's really getting really good in transition. And then, you know, against that zone, you know, he and Kerr kind of had a nice little connection going there, and uh, and you know it, it, that that zone they can kind of play off non shooters and extend on shooters. I mean, they adjust on that zone. I mean, uh, and, and, and so they, they did a good job fighting Kerr and Kerr did a great job having his feet ready and knocking down some, some tough, you know, half contested threes, but th those are some shots you got to shoot against Washington. Next question, David Kelly. Hey Tommy, you talked about their defense and, and, and kind of how problematic that is. Do you think that was one of the reasons that after you guys got that early lead and we're knocking down shots early that maybe the kids started settling for jumpers rather than maybe trying to work the ball inside a little bit more? Well, I mean, in, in, in theory, for sure. I mean, you know, the, the, the deal with that zone is there's a cumulative effect to it. They, they just hang with it, and they make subtle little adjustments in it. And you might make some shots early, and then you don't make them. And then you start getting a little anxious and a little tight. And then they come down to the other end. And what's really interesting when you play Washington is their offense complements their defense. If they get a steal or a turnover, they're running it down trying to dunk it. So they'll play fast. If they don't, they'll bring the ball up, slow up the court. They'll, they'll get in their little ISO dribble situations, and they'll kind of run a very simple action and kind of pick the matchup they want. So, so it, it really kind of it allows them to, in a certain way to control the game at uh, both ends of the floor. And, and I think, you know, it took our guys a little bit while to kind of get comfortable with that today. So um, they executed their plan well, and, and, and luckily our guys were, were good enough today to kind of stay up all game. I mean, I think they cut it to like four or five at one point in the second half, but, but all in all, um, you know, we did a good job kind of keeping our, our lead at eight to ten and kind of riding that out over the course of the game. Was there any concern on your end that you didn't really get a whole lot out of your bench, or is that maybe kind of kind of what we're going to begin to see now that we're into these these Pac-12 games? No, no where... I mean, and listen, our, our bench players are good players, and 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 you know, Justin didn't have a great night. You know, he's you know he kind of maybe it's his first time playing against that zone, and and he had some passing errors. You know, I think he had three turnovers in the first half, and you know, Umar's energy didn't look great tonight. And you know, I mean, when they got in there, he got a couple offensive rebounds, but then you know, they got a couple offensive rebounds on him. So 
you know, I mean, th 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 those were the things I saw tonight. So, th so that's the reason we made the decisions we did. And but I'm going to give Pella a ton of credit. I mean, Pella kind of tweaked his ankle there, and uh, you know, and he kind of looked a little shaky in the first half, and then he kind of settled in, and and we went small that last stretch, maybe just to give us some better defensive matchups, and and fortunately it worked. And and Pella gets a ton of credit for kind of toughing it out on a you know a tweaked ankle. Next question, Justin Spears. We're not going to hear from you until then, but just your expectations for this weekend. It's your first rivalry game. And what's your relationship like with Bobby Hurley? Well, I mean, we know each other a little bit. You know, we haven't talked a lot, but but every time it's been really cordial. I mean, I have a ton of respect for him. I mean, he's obviously was a, a great player in college that I grew up watching and, uh, you know, always admired him and, and have a ton of respect for that Duke pedigree. Um, and then, you know, Arizona State, I, I haven't dug into him too much. I've watched him on TV a few times, but yet to really watch any film on him. So, you know, that, that, that'll give me a, a good project to do tomorrow. And, you know, I mean, I know, I know you, you, rivalry games are, are, are exciting for the fans. You know, the, the, the way we're approaching it is just the next game on our schedule. It's the, it's the next hurdle in, in, in the Pac-12 race that we're running. And we want to do the best job we can clearing that hurdle. Next question, Bruce Pasco. Hey, Tommy, uh, just you kind of answered it a little bit. Just wondering about the, the end of the game. What were the keys there? You mentioned that the mat, the defensive matchups you tried to get uh, any other thing that kind of maybe felt like you were getting back to normal there at the end, really playing well. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we just, we made, we had energy, we made a few plays, you know, got, got a couple rebounds, um, you know, and, and maybe picked up a couple loose balls and, you know, our, our, our defense has been really good, you know, and, and, and tonight it wasn't for long stretches in that game. And, you know, we're going to sit down and watch it and then address it. But, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, Washington gets some credit for that. You know, I mean, uh, Terrell Brown was spectacular. I mean, that, that's the first time I've really like seen him, seen him play or scouted him. And he's a heck of a player. And, 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 uh, you know, he gets a ton of credit for coming in here tonight and giving his old team 28. So, you know, you, you tip your hat to him and he had, I think six assists, one turnover, five steals. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a game, but I told our guys, listen, he's a really good player and, and he's got a ton of freedom and he's got a ton of experience. You know, he, he, he might win a few of the battles, you know, but, but our, our ultimate goal is to win the war as a team. And, and luckily we were able to do that. Next question, Brian Peterson. How important is it for, for Kerr to get hot like this in terms of with his threes to where you're not worried when he puts that up? Well, I mean, honestly, I'm never worried when Kerr puts up too many too many shots. I mean, I, I've seen him make a bunch of them. And, 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 and when you play the way Kerr does, you know, you know the, the coach-player relationship, there has to be a mutual respect and an understanding. You know, I've got to give him freedom. I don't know if Kerr's a, as good a player if you put the shackles on him. Now, you know, Kerr's got to handle that freedom with responsibility, which he does most of the time. And, you know, I, I've the, the, the shooting and the shot selection, you know, I mean, you know, we talk about it a little bit, but I told him I want to have his feet ready. I want him to be aggressive. You know, now, now I want him to continue to grow as a playmaker and, um, you know, in, 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 in little diff, find little different techniques that, that will play to Kerr Crease's advantage. You know, Kerr, Kerr's game is probably going to be different than Dalen. So I want Kerr to really lock into those. And I, I think he's at a, a really cool part of his career where he has confidence. He's starting to have some success. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I'm going to really challenge him to make a big jump here in, in the next month. Thank you. Next question, Steve Rivera. Yeah, Tommy, I'm sure you experienced this at Gonzaga where if you don't route a team, people have concerns, fans and people like that. Uh, how is it here, you think? I mean, I mean, Steve, I'm not paying too much attention to that. You know, I mean, you know, for, for me, I, I, hey, I, I just in those games, I try to keep my head about me. And, and you know, I, I reminded our guys, I think like at, I don't know, the under 12 media timeout in the second half, I just wrote plus eight on the board. I'm like, guys, we're up eight. OK, so so let's not panic. We don't need to win this game by 40. You know, we, we just need to make sure we win it. So so settle into the game and, and, and understand at the end at, in, in conference games, you're not going to win everyone in a blowout and, and you might not be any blowout. So you got to get comfortable playing close, hard fought games. And 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 I think we're getting there as a team. So, um, you know, I, hey, I, I'm a result oriented guy and um, I tell our, my my staff I'm, I'm most focused on uh, two analytics, W's and L's. And um, and we got the win tonight, so you know I'm going to feel good about it and and roll up my sleeves and figure out areas we can get better and hopefully Saturday you know we'll play a little bit better than we did on uh, Monday. All right, good. One more. Uh, ben continues to do what he does. Uh, does he surprise you at all at any time? Because he continues to do really well. 
I mean, he, he's learning. It's just so much fun to watch him learn. You know, I mean, I, I know I felt like a little bit early in that second half, he was a little bit out of sorts, um, you know, just with the movement within the zone. And, you know, so I, we, we subbed him and I told Murph to go talk to him and, you know, maybe to, you know, find a couple of different pockets in that zone. And he did a great job of, of listening. And you saw him get down on that baseline in there and, and, and attack the center. And he's athletic and strong enough to do it and got a couple of and ones. So he, he just, you know, I'm not surprised because he's doing it every night. I mean, he, he's really consistent and he's doing it on a daily basis. And, and I'm really happy for him. And he and I have had some great talks and, and, and we're both locked into just uh, winning for uh, Arizona basketball right now. Next question, Jason Shear. Coach, you went with the, the smaller lineup a little bit in the second half. Just why'd you do that? Thoughts on that lineup? And then are you a little concerned with Azulis the last few games? No, no, no. I mean, in Zoo, you know, he, he had a, you know, the, hey, he has been really good defensively this year. And, and that was an area of concern we all had coming into the season. And, and he'd really answered it and was really guarding well on the perimeter. You know, he, he maybe got stuck on a few screens and didn't have the urgency he had on Matthews. But, you know, coming into the game, Matthews was a low percentage shooter. And then, you know, he decides to make his first four threes. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't anything crazy. I mean, he, he hadn't been out of the game yet in the second half. So I think he'd played the first 12 minutes and I just was, Hey, let's give Pella a chance and, and see how it goes. And it's just one of those deals. The last eight minutes, you had a lineup out there that was playing pretty well on both ends of the floor. So we just wrote it out and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and not, nothing really, you know, detrimental to, to zoo. You know, the biggest thing with zoo that I have is, you know, he, he's got to rebound better and he's got to take care of the ball. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, he's, he just, he's got to really, really hone in on those two areas. And I think if he does, he'll make a big jump. Next question back to David Kelly. You talked a little bit about, you know, giving Kerr freedom out there on the floor, Tommy, but do you feel like at times you need to, if not reel in his chippiness, at least get him to temper it so he doesn't get himself in trouble out there? I mean, it, it, it's a fine line, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, Kerr, Kerr needs that edge probably to, to help him function at a high level out there. And, and he and I definitely have conversations about it and we'll continue to have conversations about it. But, but, but Kerr is a mature guy and, um, and, and he's open to those conversations, but you know, what, 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 and you know, I, I said this on the radio, I think the biggest strength of this team is they got a great spirit. And, and, and I don't want to crush that spirit, you know, so, so I'm walking a fine line as a coach, you know, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, traditionally, you know, you would, uh, you know, you would get a little bit more upset at some things, but I'm trying to look at the big picture of these guys. I'm trying to coach them, you know, as individuals within a team concept. And, um, and, and so, you know, with, with Kerr, you know, we'll continue to work on, you know, him, 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 him being at his best and, and, and trying to figure out exactly what his best looks like and, and how chippy that needs to be. We have time for one more question. We'll go back to Bruce Pasco. Hey, Tommy. What, what th I was just wondering what your plans are for this week. With you know, everything's going to be weird scheduling wise. It seems like, but you've got you don't play till Saturday again. How do you plan to use that time? And and well, what do you think well, about? Well, I was also yeah. wondering what you think about ASU playing on. Yeah, Monday. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll probably take tomorrow off and you know and, and meet as a staff and, and kind of form a plan for how we want to attack the rest of the week and maybe a few of us will sneak out recruiting on a Tuesday night you know trying to catch games when we can and um, and then you know we'll, we'll hone in and we'll have you know three good days of prep on Arizona State and, and, and to be honest with you we're hundred percent focused on Arizona State I mean that, that's our next opponent on Saturday and we get we're fortunate to get three days to prepare so it kind of builds like a normal conference week you know like normally once you get into your normal conference schedule you have a sunday off you have monday tuesday wednesday to prep and then uh you play on thursday so we kind of get that three-day build up and uh and hopefully we'll we'll do a great job you know breaking these guys down for the players and the players will absorb it and we'll come out and execute and play a good game is it do you think it helps or hurts that asu plays on wednesday while you're doing all that I mean, I don't think it factors in, you know, I mean, I think right now, you know, there, I mean, everybody's going to be looking for who has an advantage, who has a disadvantage and, 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 and we're all going to be in situations where it looks like we have an advantage one game and the next game we have a slight disadvantage because we had a shorter prep time. So right now in, in our current situation, we just need to be thankful when we get games in. And, and I was really thankful to play the game tonight. It wasn't perfect, but um, you know, it, it was a lot more fun to play it than it was to sit at home and do nothing. All right, thanks.